Okay, so I'm going to repeat my intro again. A little bit of time away from the channel, want to get things going again quickly, get back on the horse, punch out three videos fast. So this is the third in that series. This is going to be my unpopular opinions, 11 through 15. See me after the intro. Hi, I'm Pete McConville. Welcome to my channel where I overthink, overanalyze, and basically just geek out on what is more than a grown man really should. Um, what I'm doing today is getting back on the horse. I haven't put some videos out for a while. This should be the third in a series I punch out pretty quickly to get some momentum and get rolling again. Inspired by a question that was asked over on the Watch Forum, Watch Crunch, someone said, give me your own um, unpopular watch opinions I answered with one then two then five then ten then fifteen and using that as inspiration breaking it up into three groups of five putting out three videos over a Friday Saturday Sunday so this is my third and final installment in that sort of little mini collection unpopular opinion number depending on how you want to call it I'm going to say 11 to encourage you to go back and look at the other videos unpopular 11 um, popular watch opinion number 11 is that when it comes to watches, things can be objectively different, but they cannot be objectively better. Yes, we can measure water resistance, we can measure power reserves, we can measure all sorts of things, and they can be different, and we can measure that. And I'm happy saying that something with a power reserve of 72 hours is objectively different to something with a, po a power reserve of 50 hours. But the second you say that it's better, you've instantly, you, you must have now a priority of characteristics. You must have created in your mind a sense of, well, these are the characteristics of a watch that matter. This is how they align with it with each other and therefore this is the basis upon which I will put one characteristic in front of another. The act of prioritization is always every single time, never without exception, a subjective action. Each person will prioritize things differently. Therefore, something can definitely be objectively different, something can never be objectively better. So we need to get past that language when it comes to describing watches. A quick one here, um, so this is unpopular opinion number 12, caring about resale value and caring about what other people think of your watches is essentially the same thing. It, its effect is the same. So to say that you don't care about what other people think of your watches, but to give a toss about resale value is essentially oxymoronic. Okay, so unpopular opinion number 13, there are three key parts of watchmaking. The hardest part of watchmaking is designing a great watch that people are going to love. Slightly easier, but still difficult, is then selling that great watch and getting people to really want it. Far and away, the easiest part of making a watch is in fact making the damn watch, getting it produced. That is far and away the easiest part of being a watchmaker. Okay, so unpopular opinion number 14 very much is a follow-on from my last one where I said that the easiest part of being a watchmaker is just making someone else's idea of a great watch and then selling that watch because someone else has already done the work. For that reason, 99.99% of homage watches, which are really knockoffs, are horrendously overpriced because all that person needs to do is, you know, catch an Uber to the finish line of the marathon and then run across the finish line with their arms in the air. They've got to take it to a factory and say, here, make me this, but cheaper. There's no risk. There's no development. There's no prototyping. There's no getting ready for the next watch. There's no paying for the last watch. If you look at the cheapest watches that are half decent quality, you can buy on AliExpress, those cost around about 40 to 50 Australian dollars. If you're paying anything more than 40 to 50 Australian dollars for your San Martin or your Pagani Design or any of those other knockoff brands, you are being absolutely robbed. No knockoff should ever cost 
as much as 50 bucks. That's probably too much, but let's call that the max. Okay, so let's wrap this up so we can get into doing some proper videos with editing and imaging next time around. Uh, unpopular opinion number 15, the last of this series. That is, a tool watch must be quartz, must be plastic, and should probably cost less than 50 bucks. If it doesn't have either, if it doesn't have any of those three characteristics, which by the way is basically describes the cheapest G-Shock you can buy, you're not buying a tool watch. When you're thinking about what is actually a tool watch, Here's a good test. What would you buy for someone you didn't like very much that needed that you needed to buy a watch for them that they got to keep? Think about what that watch would be. You just found a tool watch. As soon as you inject yourself into that, as soon as you say what I would like, you are out of the world of tools, you are into the world of what you want that would make you happy, and you're now in the world of luxuries, not tools. So like I said, anything more than a $50 G-Shock ain't a tool watch. Okay, so that's it. Um, with a bit of luck, I'll get all these videos out. As I said, they're a bit rough and ready, um, but I just need to get going again. I've been in a bit of a mental fog over the last couple of weeks, then, therefore no videos, and I've decided to just rip the band-aid off and punch these out quickly. I apologize for the fact that the production isn't going to be great and all that sort of stuff, but I need to just get rolling again. Leave me lots of comments below. As I said, we'll probably fight over some of the stuff and if you tell me that you don't care about anything as i've said a million times before i'll just call you a liar i've been pete mcconville see you later bye